reason I've been obsessed with Cuba for all of these years uh, lies just 90 miles to the north. I fell in love with coral reefs in the Florida Keys, and it's heartbreaking today to see that almost 90 percent, 80 to 90 percent of those coral reefs have died. In the Caribbean, about 50 percent of the coral reefs have died. We're here because in these waters, Cuba has the healthiest reefs left in the Caribbean. It's so inspiring to me. It brought hope back to me. And I feel that here in Cuba, there is a lesson for the rest of us around the Caribbean and around the world of how to take care of coral reefs and natural resources. We started our work during very difficult political times. It was a time when there were no diplomatic relations between our countries, and getting work done was incredibly difficult. But nevertheless, we worked with our Cuban colleagues and for 10 years launched a set of expeditions off of Cuba's northwestern coast and mapped the coral reef ecosystems. In early 2014, Ocean Doctor organized a meeting in Washington, D.C. to find a way to work together to build the foundation for how our governments might work together. And we came up with a blueprint of environmental conservation. Little did we know that just a few months later, at the end of 2014, Raul Castro and Barack Obama would come on TV and change the world, restoring the normalization of relations between our countries. It was a monumental moment in history. And a few months later, I attended the reopening of the Cuban embassy in Washington, D.C. And it was a surprise to me. Diplomats were coming up to me and shaking my hand and saying, David, thank you for all of the efforts that you have done you made today possible. And they said, marine conservation and the collaboration that you've realized has been one of the best examples of collaboration between Cuba and the United States. It laid the foundation of trust on, on top of which we were able to build the trust to restore relations. So it was quite an honor when Barack Obama finally came to Cuba he mentioned the oceans as a specific area of collaboration. Our governments will also work together to protect the beautiful waters of this region that we share. Today we're really trying to solve problems and problems that can affect the entire world. We're using environmental economics, something required by Cuban environmental law to help Cubans make good decisions about the environment, something that I wish we had done in the United States, where the environment was too often free, free to dump your waste into the environment and free to extract what you wanted from the environment. But now we know there's a cost to that. It, the environment brings us many things, such as protecting the shoreline or giving us fish. Um, these are important things that have a dollar value. The other issue we're working on is tourism. Earlier this year, with the Cuban ambassador, we held an event in Washington, D.C., and we released a report that we did in collaboration with the Center for International Policy. Cuba has not followed the same path as the rest of the Caribbean, and we've seen the environmental destruction, the social destruction, and the very negative impacts that mass tourism has had. And our hope is that working together, Cuba can be a sustainable model for the rest of the Caribbean, for the United States, and for the rest of the world. But we really need your help to continue this work. Our work is incredibly difficult, as you can imagine, Americans working in Cuba. We've survived for nearly 19 years now. And we hope to continue this work with your help. 
thank you.